So we're into 2019. We're back. Thanks for joining us again, Alex and Cam. Uh, this is podcast episode three and the third of our series here where we're working together. We have some exciting stuff for uh, the rest of the year with some other guests and things. Um, but to finish off these three, I really want to, I asked around, we asked a lot of our agents to give us some feedback and find out what sort of they wanted to hear from us, what they want to know, uh, and what's really important to them. A lot of the questions we got, sort of, we, we end up with fears. Where to, what's the market going to be like in the future? Where are things going? What's going to happen with all these different ideas? Sure. But sort of to boil it down, what I think we have to do is boil down the fears into what's actionable. So the actionable question really uh, is what's working in business today and what's going to keep you in business five years from now. So Cam, let me start with you. Where do you see a lot of our successful agents and particularly the newer agents that have been able to grow and develop businesses, regardless of the market up, market down, wherever it was, what are they doing that's, that's really successful? Yeah, thank you very much, Jeremy. The most successful agents, frankly, the most successful business people have a great referral system, right? So they've got a great group of past clients or friends and family that they can go to, stay in touch with, uh, get not only their business, but have them refer them to new people in their sphere. It's the place everybody's got to start. It's the real key to success. It's the starting, the foundation really to a good real estate practice. So uh, that's, that's, I think, if I were to focus somebody, if I were to head them in a direction, it would be on your repeat and referral system. How's that working for you? What are you doing? And specifically, do you have it set up for 2019 for right. success? Right. And I think uh, just, uh, I agree with you 100%, Cam, the key word that you use is practice. Yeah. Doctors have practices, accountants have practices, lawyers have practices. And why they have practices is because they're saying their clientele come back every year. Yeah. And the big problem we have in real estate is our agents do not build a practice. They're constantly looking for new people to do business with. And so that's the key is you have to build a practice and the only way to build a practice is stay in touch with your customers. Right, absolutely. So we've been really big, our, our big uh, push for the last few months as Remax Realtron has been getting our agents uh, using their CRMs, getting them on a regular monthly contact system where they're contacting the agents. Uh, we've talked about numbers, I don't want to get too much in, in the nitty gritty here, but we talked about 30, 40 contacts a year by phone, email, um, direct mail, what do you think is working right now? Uh, the personal contact is always the best. It is always the best. It, you know, I've been in the business 45 years and it really hasn't changed much. Uh, it is still a people business. <laughs> My first broker said real estate is face to face, belly to belly. That hasn't changed. Um, despite all of the technology, people still want to deal with people. Right. You said something to me I wrote down last week. Uh, you said that social media and internet leads and, and they're not new ways of doing business, just new tools. A new so tool. So explain a little bit more about that. Yes. We think that the internet is a new way to talk to people to get business. It's not. It's, the old, it's, it's a tool to help you stay in touch with clients. And that's why you need a CRM. That's why you need to, to be constantly in touch with them because the competition for the clients is great. One of the, the, the biggest stats that I remember is that uh, when a transaction is completed, uh, the clients were asked, would you deal with your agent again? 95% said they would. Five years later, only 20% used the same agent. When they were asked why, they said, we lost touch. Right. Why do we lose touch? Oh, that's such a good question. Honestly, it, it should be it should be obvious. It should be saying, obvious. But as an agent uh, myself, going through it for years, I wasn't great at it. I know it's. Uh, I think we have this fear that there's going to be something wrong with the house. You know, the the roof leaked, and they're going to blame me. So it's better if I leave them alone, so they can't blame me in case there's something wrong with the house, and go look for another person. So, like a surgeon, we're trying to bury our mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Cam, I, I feel like 
every agent doesn't want to be a salesperson. We want to sell. We want to do, do business. Then maybe we don't want to call ourselves a salesperson. So we do the original deal as a consultant, but then when we want to call them back and do more business, do we feel like we're, we're becoming salespeople? Is that, is that a thing? What, what's your take on that? Are you, yeah, do you always yeah. consider yourself a salesman? Is that? Yeah, always a salesman. I mean, I, uh, you know, we have to be proud to be salespeople. Salespeople is about matching needs, fulfilling needs. It's not about creating something that doesn't exist, right? So you're not, you're not selling. You are a consultant. I mean, that's really what sales is. But you know what? I think on top of what Alex is saying about uh, we have a, you know, a tendency not to want to contact people because we fear the worst. I think though we also have a, a you know a, a tendency not to systematize things right so that we get busy with non-productive things or get busy chasing the new client or get busy serving the one new client and forget about the having a systematic approach to keeping in touch with the with your referral group your repeat referral group right so so if you go to and I, I one of the things hopefully that this is helpful for is to help people systematize so I really everybody for 2019 should have a repeat and referral there should be 36 touches right so you should think about it as three touches a month um, a great way to do that is that you have a monthly uh, dear friend letter that you send there's out there's 12, 12 right there right. you have a monthly newsletter there's another 12 and no there's nothing wrong with sending two things but these are these are paper based these are not emails these are things you're writing on an envelope to give deliver Canada post style so you want to you want to mail directly I'm mail that dear friend letter let's be honest yeah. Yeah. Jeremy yeah. let's be honest emails yeah. do not work do not work yeah yeah uh, third if you're lucky if you're lucky 30 percent will open them yeah, yeah. the not, rest that's don't a great that's, a great, <laughs> that's a great number exactly. so which so let yeah. me just push back a little bit for one second I still think there's a value to someone seeing your name in your inbox and not opening it. The problem but, is, I'll, I'll give you the but. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah. Well, the but, the but is that I have a whole bunch of people in my inbox that I know their name because I get their email all the time. Right. But I don't even remember what they do. Right. But if that person contacts me and calls me and says, "Hey, I've been sending you emails," I'll know that person. So I think there's a. You know, what, what does uh, your brother say? The artillery? The artillery before the... the invasion. Invasion. The infantry. Yeah, the inf the, yeah. The yeah. infantry. Yeah. Okay, but here's my but. Yeah. How many of those emails are going into spam and they never even see them? I don't know why my email doesn't filter my spam well enough. <laughs> I get so many emails, right? You see that. The bottom line, as, I, as, you, in, as you started off saying, the internet is a new tool. But right. it's not a good enough tool that it, it's 100% of your business. Right. So here's another factoid. Uh, after five years, 65% of an agent's business comes from 18 to 20% of their database. Which means that they're only keeping in touch with 16 to 18 to 20%. Right. If they could keep in touch with 40% of their database, then they would double their income. Yeah. So how do you stay in touch with this? So and that's a key. That, that's an yeah. awesome one. I think that's really, like it's a simple thing, right? If you have 100 people in your database, I agree, you look, you're getting leads from 15 to 20 of those people. Right. Maybe, maybe in 2019, you say, I wanna, I wanna add 10 people that I become really close with. We can talk about doing the whole system, but maybe also honing in on who are the 10 that are also gonna give me Absolutely. this? Absolutely. We categorize them into A's and B's, but so maybe who are the 10 A's that I'm going to add? Who are the 10 extra people I'm going to get a right. referral from? In addition to systematizing it to get business from everyone. Right. And here's the key. The only way to add A's is to spend personal time with them. Face to face, belly to belly. Right. Take the next 10 people who you'd like to make into A's and have lunch with them every three months. Call them up and go, I'm in your area. Let me buy you lunch. You're in Mississauga. Just by coincidence, I'm going to be there next Tuesday. You want to have lunch. I haven't seen you for a while. And you have lunch with them uh, every three months, and then all of a sudden, you create a relationship. The reason why you didn't create that relationship is because you didn't spend time. Right. Okay, so we prefer direct email. Or direct ma uh, I even we said do direct not prefer. <laughs> direct mail. Direct, direct mail, mail is works. a necessity. Yeah. It works. Yeah, direct mail. Email as a supplement, maybe. Sure. No, it doesn't hurt. Face-to-face no. -face is a must. Must. 
So 2019, we're getting face to face with more people. Right. That's that's going to be the key. Sorry, let me back up. Not yeah. more people, more face to face with the people that you want to um, that are part of your practice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Why I say more people, I think the the people we actually end up that top 15, 20 percent we end up doing business with are people we happen to see anyways. Are people who we have uh, naturally liked and right. they like us. So it's easy to stay in touch with. Right. They've become friends. The others, we haven't taken the time or the effort to make friends. Yeah. And all you need is 100 friends. Mm -hmm. Because every five years, people buy and sell. So if you have 100 friends who love you and are committed to you, then every five years, 20 of them are going to buy and sell. There's a potential 40 transactions. Right. Just by having 100 friends. What would you do? And, and that's 500,000 income. What would you do? Yeah, I'm with to you. To have that kind of income. Yeah. Make friends. Right. And it starts with having your CRM together, that's getting your why, database together, right. putting it together. That's really why we have set up our own system mm -hmm. um, uh, with our own CRM to help our agents stay in touch. We have special programs that help our agents stay in touch with their clientele, keep track of them. And the business is not that hard if we do, as Cam says, is systematize it. Create a system of success. Mm -hmm. And beyond database, what are, what are the other tools we need uh, as agents prepared to talk to people? I think the big thing is when, when referral type business comes in, it comes in as, a, as a, like a friendly phone call. Hey Cam, how's the market going? What, do you think it's a good time to buy? Do you think it's a good time to get a bigger house? That, that's the type of question. How are we prepared to answer that? Well, sure. What do you have to keep in mind? Yeah, well, I, so two things. So you're talking about uh, someone reaching out to me as a salesperson, right? I mean, I, I think it's very important for the agent to make sure they're reaching out to their database, right? So I just want to turn that around for one sec. There's nothing wrong with getting a call, but we've got to make the calls and uh, right. keep in touch, right? So. Um, you know, so some of the things we can probably do today for our salespeople will help them with some ideas. So often they struggle to, what am I going to talk about? Why, if I phone them, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? They're right. going to think it's stupid. So there's so many great, valuable things you can help a prospect, someone in your database with, right? So every year they're sitting there, they get a new tax bill for the with property taxes, right? And, and right this year happens to be the new assessment year for the next three years. So right now everybody should be calling up or send a letter, follow it up and say, hey, just want to see if you got my letter. It's, it's tax assessment time. Uh, would you like me to do uh, an evaluation of your home to ensure your assessment is correct? How does right. that sound to you? Right, a, a perfectly great value thing to add. Wonderful way to start this year. You're ahead of everybody else who might have that mm -hmm. idea. Um, you know, so there's one idea. We've got home show tickets coming up. The Remax home show tickets. Hey, I've got this great opportunity. I'd love to on my on my behalf to have him go to the home show. You know, yeah. would you and your your spouse like to go? And just for yeah. for our agents who uh, don't know about it, maybe, or or for other agents listening in, yeah. how, how does yeah. the home show program? Work? Sure. Yeah. So Remax is a is a prime sponsor of the home show. We get VIP tickets. Uh, online, uh, we will be sending out very shortly the link to get those tickets, and the, it's beautiful. You only pay for those tickets that are used, so it's like nine bucks a ticket. It's an incredibly discounted rate, anyhow. But you could send out a thousand of these things, have twenty people use them, and it's it's twenty times nine bucks as opposed to a thousand. But a thousand people are going to go, "Wow, Jeremy cares for me. He right. really knows he's and he knows I'm interested in the home show." And and some years I'll go, some years I won't. But here's a, a great thing he's offered me. So let me just. Uh, uh, build on what you said, Cam, and uh, I, I think you said you could send out a thousand. Yeah. Hit, no, no, I know yeah. that's an exaggeration, yeah. but I think the challenge we have as agents, uh, we as people figure, I need big numbers. Yeah. You don't need big numbers. No. All you need is a hundred people who love you. Yeah. And then if you have a hundred, you send out the home show tickets saying, did you get those home show tickets? Right. There's one touch. Two weeks later, did you use the home show tickets? Yeah. There's another touch. Yeah. Uh, every month we have the dear friend letter. Hey, did you get the dear friend letter? What do you think? Any questions I can answer for you? Yeah. Uh, we had agents when, when um, uh, uh, the stamps went out by uh, one penny, we had a, an agent send out 10 stamps and he got three callbacks saying, wow, thanks for the stamps. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking of selling my house and had three deals. 
So it's finding uh, reasons why showing people that you're thinking about them and caring about them, they'll think and care about you. Right. And you only need a hundred good friends. Yeah. Yeah. And as a tip, I always found if I, if I could go Sunday night and say, this is what I'm calling everyone and saying for the whole week, this is what I'm saying, it worked really well. Absolutely. Other times when I said, okay, I better call some people and it's Wednesday afternoon and I haven't called anyone, I had that panic. So what you need I, two what things. Do I tell them? You need two things. One, you're right. You need the reason why you're calling. And number two, you need an excuse why you're getting off the phone. <laughs> so let's say the excuse of the month is, oh my goodness, the dog just ran out through the screen door, I gotta go chase him. Yeah. There's your excuse, because <laughs> some people wanna talk forever. Yeah. So you need a reason, because this is a business call, Right. and you need an excuse why you called, and you yeah. need an excuse why you have to get off the yeah. phone. Yeah, Brian Buffini would do his pop-ins, and he would leave the car running. Say, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on my way to the door's open, I can't come in right. for tea, that, that Ex same thing. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. you need yeah. an excuse of the month. Yeah, so the, the reason to get on, the reason to get off, and, and you're right, the Dear Friend letter, plus you're sending another newsletter which your CRM can organize for you, that, that that's what we have. That's why we spend so much time on it. Read yeah. your newsletter is a good tip, read your own <laughs> newsletter. Yeah, <laughs> We've all done it. You know, well, yes, <laughs> I was going to say there's a lot of really good expressions, out of sight, out of mind. Right. You have to find a reason why to meet these people. Yeah. It's only a hundred. <laughs> And the average agent says, a hundred isn't enough, I need a thousand. Yeah. Right. And then I got to call them, oh my goodness, a thousand is so much, I can never do it, let me not bother. Yeah. 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 And so we started with the really simple, let me go a little more complex for the next one. Uh, client parties. I've heard a lot of agents having great experiences with client parties. Can be as simple as uh, like a skating day we've done in the past. Uh, a movie movie day where you get a Sunday morning and you get the new Disney movie that comes out and you get something like that or just a just a coffee wine and cheese something like that Any excuse one of our agents every year does a birthday party for himself and he invites all his clients and say come and at the birthday party he says, thanks for coming thanks for making this a great year for me any reason at all you can think of, of getting people together mm -hmm. and having them think about you right and so what's, what's one thing we can tell people to, to get them over the edge to actually to do implement, them. to do one of these things? Yeah. Well, it works. Most business comes from this. Um, and, and we've given you some ideas now to, to actually reach out to people now, right? Don't, don't wait to. You've got to get this going. Um, you know, one of the other things, and so, um, so maybe this is for newer realtors, and I'll just go this tangent a little bit, is uh, so where do you get the 100 people, right? Some people will go there. Obviously, if you've been in business for a while, hopefully you've got past clients. It's a little bit easier, but um, I always love the concept, and I'm not sure if this is you, Alex, or if it's Richard, but the wedding list concept, right? That it's uh, you're planning a wedding for right. yourself or a close family member. Put together a little list of 100 people you'd invite, know you, like you, trust you. That's the place to start, and it shouldn't be that difficult, right? And then you can just, if you're newer too, you can just take the opportunity to call them up and send them your business card and uh, say how excited you are to be with Remax, and uh, and make sure they've got you've got the right contact information to get in touch with them. What a great way to just start that up, right? Absolutely, right. Absolutely yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, you know, it, it it doesn't take much. It takes a commitment. We had one a uh, 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 new immigrant lady. Um, did an open house, picked up a client, sold the house. Every day, she would go over to that lady and have tea with her. Every day. Then that lady gave her another client. She had two people to have tea with every day. And within two years, uh, she was making a platinum club, you know, over $250,000. Wow. Just by having tea with people, yeah. face to face. Started with one person, right? Belly yeah. to belly. Yeah. Yeah. Meeting people. Built great relationships just over and over again. People want to, you know, it, it's interesting uh, um, that here we are 10 years now into the internet and into the travel industry and, and people are, are uh, could book their tickets online, yet more and more are going back to dealing with travel agents. Right. Because they want that personal touch. Yeah. And I think uh, the same thing we're seeing statistics where millennials are using referrals more than their previous generations. Right. It's just they're using Facebook or, or whatever to get the referrals. 
they're using the internet to get to connect with people to, to get research, information to research, right yeah and then they like you said yeah then they're reaching out getting referrals as to who they should deal with because they want to deal with people we are a social species mm -hmm. we want to see face to face we want to shake somebody's hand we want to know who we're dealing with right so to get back to what our agents questions were a lot of them related to what technology is taking over what if zillow comes in and and they take over the market and things like that i think what we're really talking about is making our business uh something you, no one can take from you if you have a hundred great relationships if you're generating leads from them nobody can no one can them. touch you no That's but you really had great. some interesting uh facts about zillow yeah so zillow i, I saw a big uh presentation about zillow zillow in the states in i think it was 2017 sent 150 million referral leads to leads, agents to agents paid leads to agents 150 million leads for a total of 5 million transactions in the United States, not just from Zillow. Total. A total transactions. Total market is 5 million. So million. that means yeah. it's 1 in 30 if every lead came from Zillow. But of course the reality is a lot of people got information from Zillow. A lot of people got five different agent ref referrals or whatever sent from Zillow that five different agents paid for. Right. And then used their agent that kept it their friends yeah. <laughs> right yeah so really i mean we can you know these these companies are coming in there's no doubt uh we have all these well, lead gen companies brokerages went of, so went out of business let's talk about this for a minute we looked last year about at competing in the lead space and we felt a little bit like we're competing with our own agents but there are companies out there brokerages that are generating leads for their agents and that's their revenue stream as opposed to the traditional brokerage model that we still use. They try. They try. They've tried. Yeah. yeah. Most of those companies haven't made it. A lot of them are, particularly as the market's softened a little bit, but I think in general, it's just exposed this idea that we can't just, we can't just buy our way out of this. With no reputation, with no name, advertising as a real estate agent just doesn't work. I always laugh when someone says, oh, you're a real estate agent, give me your business card. That person's never going to call, right? What well, you you might be stuck somewhere and you can't find a real estate agent. We're <laughs> everywhere. You can't find a cab, so you call the real estate. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see a house in that neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. So so really, it's a it's about building relationships. It's about personal one on one. It is. I think that's it. In terms of lead gen, we've had two companies in the last couple of years in Toronto that went out of business: um, Redpin and Zucasa. Right. They both were lead gen. Yeah. We as a company looked at these lead gens and it was a lot of money for very very little result it was more uh like you said 30 40 50 60 leads before you got one good uh one sale and just wasn't worth the effort right yeah. but it's a little bit of extra work to to build your relationships but uh, but yeah well, obviously it's <laughs> worth it sorry well, Cam. no i was i was just saying again going back <laughs> you know focus focus everybody's got to focus right so there's going to be the zillows there's going to be the other types of things that will try to take us our agents off off the ball right? right so we as agents get paid because we generate our leads and we serve those leads right and that's it's it's huge right so to outsource to somebody else for those leads it really is not a great model right it's not it's not a great way to go that's all Zillow is, and um, and certainly, I would recommend agents not be a part of that. Not yeah. Be paid well, for that well type I don't. Want, I don't want to get yeah. into the nitty gritty oh, of Zillow yeah, and everything. No, I want to use yeah. the last. We have yeah. a couple minutes left. Let me just find out yeah, yeah, what, what uh, Cam said. Real estate is a simple business. Meet people, get them to like you, help them solve their real estate problems, stay in touch. Yeah. If you don't want to meet people, and you don't want to stay in touch. You can't make friends and you can't help them solve their problems. So you have no business. So unless you're prepared to meet people, get them to like you, stay in touch, how can you have a real estate business? Right. You have no business. Okay, that's too, too much of a high note not to end there. <laughs> so that's it, guys. I think, I think we've, we've exhausted this topic. Uh, thanks. It's been a fun three episodes. Uh, we're all obviously all going to be here for the whole year and uh, we're going to have some special guests. It's going to be lots of fun. Yeah, uh, thanks for everyone for tuning in and watching. We're now on Spotify, uh, iTunes, 
Google Play, YouTube, Podbean. If you can't find us, it's not our problem. Uh, thanks very much, guys. All right. We will thanks. see you. Uh, have a great year, everyone, and uh, we'll keep in touch. All right. Thanks very much. Thanks. thanks.